Hello, today I'm going to talk about a widely discussed thought experiment in the philosophy of consciousness, the knowledge argument and the case of Mary the Colour Scientist, devised by Australian philosopher Frank Jackson, which he discusses in two main papers, Epiphenomenal Qualia from 1982 and What Mary Didn't Know from 1986. This is an argument for dualism. Does it work? Well, we'll see. As with most of the topics I discuss, I go into this in more detail in my yet-to-be-published book, provisionally titled Stuff and Consciousness. OK, Mary is a scientist who has spent her whole life in a black and white room and everything she's ever seen has been black and white. She has never seen anything of any other colour. But she also knows everything about neurophysiology and what happens in the human brain when it sees colours, coloured objects. So what happens when Mary finally leaves her black and white room and sees a coloured object, say a red object? Well, according to Jackson, she will not have previously known what it was like to see red objects, so she will, she will learn something new despite already knowing all the relevant physical facts. This, according to Jackson, means that conscious experiences are not covered by the physical facts, so therefore materialism is false. But does this argument really work against materialism? Well, American philosopher Daniel Dennett, in his book Consciousness Explained from 1991, argues not. According to Dennett, if Mary truly knew absolutely everything physical, rather than just a lot, then she would be able to work out what it was like to see red. Dennett continues the thought experiment in his own way. When Mary is released, she is shown a blue banana, but knows it's a trick because she already knew what effect blue and yellow would have on her nervous system and on her other thoughts. However, it is still possible that she would be able to work out what colour the banana is. Without knowing in advance what blue or yellow actually look like, she might be able to work out the colour when she sees it, as Dennett has described, but still learn what the colour looks like when she actually sees the banana. But of course she may be able to go one better and be able to work out, be able to imagine the coloured object, so already know what it looks like, not merely be able to identify it on sight. To continue on from Dennett, perhaps she could use this, use a feedback method for this, now, looking to read out for her brain function and trying various things with her mind to get her brain to match up with a predicted readout from seeing that colour, perhaps in the same way that people try to learn how to slow their pulse rate down. It's possible that she would be able to do all of this, but that's not really the point. Finding a way of imagining colours from the inside like this would be doing something extra with her complete physical knowledge. She could still have complete phys physical knowledge, but not even attempt to learn anything more. And as Jackson argues in What Mary Didn't Know, and I quote, The contention about Mary is not that, despite her fantastic grasp of neurophysiology and everything else physical, she could not imagine what it is like to sense red. It is that, as a matter of fact, she would not know. But if physicalism is true, she would know. And no great powers of imagination would be called for. Imagination is a faculty that those who na lack knowledge need to fall back on. End quote. Physicalism is basically a synonym for materialism here. OK, we are concerned with the mere possibility of knowing everything physical and not knowing what it is like to see colour. The possibility of already knowing what it is like is irrelevant. Dennett's argument would require the impossibility of not knowing. So far, the materialists still have a case to answer. So let's say for the sake of argument that it's possible that Mary knows everything physical, but still learns something new when she sees colours for the first time. Now, is this a refutation for materialism, for all types of materialism? If this is the case, then we're saying that zombic materialism is an impossibility. That's the view that we are all zombies and have no consciousness whatsoever. I discussed the term more in another video and, of course, my book. It is also worth noting, noting that Mary's new knowledge she gains when she enters the outside world would not be epiphenomenal knowledge. The point is she would go out, of, go out of the room, see a red object, and would tell everyone that she has learned what it is like to see red. Epiphenomenalism is the same as zombic materialism, apart from the fact that with epiphenomenalism, consciousness is created as an impotent byproduct. Um, it can have no effect on our behaviour. Mary's behaviour on leaving the room would be identical under these two views. Physically, they are the same of each other. So, if Mary's announcement upon leaving the room is enough to refute materialism, then it also refutes epiphenomenalism. This effectively leaves interactionist dualism, the view that consciousness is non-physical, but still has effects in the physical world. So Jackson's thought experiment would actually prove that physics is not causally complete. Now, has something gone wrong somewhere? It would appear that Mary's brain 
cannot be entirely governed by the laws of physics. But this seems to be a very strong and strange claim. It seems to prove too much. So let's go back. Does the knowledge argument really refute all kinds of materialism? Mary's brain is a physical system. Due to the makeup of her brain, Mary can answer questions about neurophysiology and she can explain to you what would happen in her brain when she sees red and also be able to tell you her reactions. But when she actually sees red for the first time, it would also be the first time that her brain actually found itself in the particular arrangement for seeing red. So if you look at things from a purely materialistic viewpoint, it is simply neural arrangements that cause people to talk about having certain experiences and feelings. So if you want, you can see the human body as a robot that is programmed to say that they are seeing, experiencing red when they see red. Mary's brain will find itself in the red arrangement for the first time and she will say that she is having the experience for the first time and that she didn't previously know what it was like. A non-physical consciousness, or indeed any type of consciousness, does not actually have to exist for this to happen. You can just see it as a physically programmed response to a novel situation. This situation has been compared to the difference between knowledge how and knowledge that. See Paul Churchland's 1989 paper, No Inquiry or Apply to Jackson, for a fuller discussion on this. You can know everything physical but not know how to do everything, like for example riding a bike. On an intellectual level you would know what your body would have to do, so that would be a case of knowledge of that. But that is not the same as physically being able to do it, which is knowledge how. Similarly, being able to put your mind into the seeing red state and therefore knowing what it looks like would be a form of knowledge how. And I think it's reasonable to say that you can have a complete physical knowledge without having all forms of knowledge how. However, if this still seems unsatisfactory to you, and you think that Mary should be able to imagine red if she has all physical knowledge, then this is still not such a problem for materialism. You could simply say that for Mary to know everything physical, she would need to know how to put her brain in the seeing red state. This is still a purely physical state of affairs and nothing non-physical needs to be postulated at any stage. So instead of saying previously that Mary knew everything physical but lacked some sort of knowledge, we would simply say that at that stage, Mary did not know everything physical. It simply means that we would be making more stringent requirements on what it means to know everything physical. Personally, I would say that the ability to put her brain into a certain state would not count as physical knowledge. If you include that, you would have to include any ability whatsoever, and I think it would be inappropriate. But philosophically, it doesn't matter either way. Nothing here requires dualism to be the case. The knowledge argument is not sufficient to disprove the causal completeness of physics, and not enough to disprove all types of materialism. But since it is such a widely used thought experiment, it is an important discussion point, but I think now we can move on.